Hello and welcome to the final presentation by Group 11 on the project Thermal Analysis of Electronics in Laptops to Resolve the Heating Issue. Overheating of laptops is one of the most common issues faced by almost all of us these days. With advancements in the technology, our laptops can perform multiple tasks at high speeds such as HD quality gaming experience. All this is possible due to various chips present in the system. It is these chips that contribute majorly to the heating issues. Cooling of these chips generally involves fans or metallic conductors, mostly copper or aluminium, of different shapes known as heat sinks. We aim to analyze these common methods and study their effect on the cooling of the chip. We will then combine these to ultimately reach the best possible combination by running simulations for multiple cases. This will benefit all high performance laptop users right from professionals to students like me. The overheating problem is pretty serious. It can lead to degradation of the chip, reduction in the battery life of the laptop as inefficient techniques eat up a lot of power and can even cause permanent damage to the electronics. Most commonly experienced issue is discomfort by the user due to formation of superficial heat spots. We conducted surveys to bring out this problem. The survey was conducted for the students of IIT Bombay and we received 120 plus responses. The data suggest more than 85% people have a whooping 5 plus hours of laptop usage. 82% of those who took part in the survey thought that heating issues might cause serious problems to their systems. Still, 81% of people do not take any steps to minimize this issue. Overall the issue is very serious and requires pressing attention towards thermal management of electronics in the laptop. We aim to contribute along the same lines. So the big picture here is just a laptop which is overheating due to all the electronics which are present inside its casing. Zoom into its hardware inside the casing and we find CPU, RAM, GPU, basic input output system all functioning together. However, our main focus here is on the GPU chip, the graphics processing unit, which is being cooled by these cooling fans and heat sinks. We chose GPU for analysis because it is the main source of heat generation among all other electronics. It is responsible for playing high resolution video games, uh, better quality videos, and it is the GPU that made most of the simulations for this project possible. Also, we are considering only two techniques and their combinations: the fans and the pins. So the problem statement is to compare all possible configurations that can be made with our limited resources. For this, the main goal is to calculate maximum temperature, its value as well as its location, and then see which design setup yields a minimum. This problem essentially involves all three modes of heat transfer: the radiation, conduction, and convection. Now, solving this problem can effectively take a lifetime. given the variety of available fins and infinite number of fan speeds and configurations so we implemented something known as the genetic algorithm of optimization uh, it is based on the ideas of natural selection like uh, survival of the fittest and genetics uh, basically it is a search based algorithm that brings down solving the problem to solving just a few cases so that we can arrive at the optimal solution uh, in our project we are solving only five sub cases and one validation case to arrive at the best design with a high degree of accuracy this flow chart explains our solution methodology and the flow of this presentation we start with a simple problem the base case then we add convective heat transfer with two possible configurations let's call them cases 2a and 2b the best out of these two is then combined individually with the two different types of fins we have rectangular and cylindrical and let us call these cases 3a and 3b Now the best amongst three A and three B is the best possible configuration with the given two traits of fan configuration and type of a heat sink because it contains the fittest version of both the traits. So the solution methodology involves solving only three broad cases. The first one being a simple finite size power source in a box. We performed this simulation using ANSYS Fluent. This case was essentially included to get a feeling for the depth of the problem. That is, how hot will the chip be if no thermal solutions are implemented? Now, the second case involves a simple finite size power source in a box. We performed this simulation using ANSYS Fluent. This case was essentially included to get a feeling for the depth of the problem. That is, how hot will the chip be if no thermal solutions are implemented? Other two broad cases which are solved using ANSYS ANSYS ice pack are just additions to the base case. We first add cooling fans which is the case 2 and then combine the best of it with two types of fins which forms our case 3 and hence we arrive at the best design. The technical problem here is stated only for the base case 
as other cases can be obtained by addition or subtraction to this case we have a chip which is finite sized located at the center of the base of the box which is the laptop the chip has power dissipation of 75 watts the question posed is to obtain the temperature contours so as to find the maximum steady state temperature and its location common sense suggests that the maximum temperature to be at the chip surface all the dimensions and material properties are known to us but from where did we take these values as mentioned earlier we had conducted surveys to understand laptop usage those who used gaming pcs faced more issues than the general use usage population we chose hp pavilion gaming laptop as our source for putting materials and dimension value it is the most popular laptop which is ideal for student use owing to multiple reasons we used solid works to create the design and cfd software like icepack and fluent to run simulations the geometry here is a simple chip in a box with nothing else present meshing is an important part of running any simulation it simply means how the given geometry is divided into a large number of elements to solve the underlying equations the finite element analysis we generated near perfect tetrahedral meshes with high element quality this is how it looks for the chip and for the box i won't go deep into what happens inside the black box it simply involves solving matrix equations based on some crude assumptions it takes in boundary conditions and solves these to give accurate results we will focus on how such problems are solved analytically using the concepts learned in the class in the validation part it involves equations like energy balance fourier's law and a lot of correlations relating dimensionless parameters we studied this simple model in depth to understand the effects of various mo- modes of heat transfer this picture shows the temperature contours in the 2d mid plane when only conduction is taken into account a hot chip is clearly visible adding convection and radiation leads to a better contour as shown here but we finally need a temperature value this scatter plot shows chip temperature reaching as high as 470 kelvin at t equal to 60 seconds these are the free convection flow contours swelling in the high temperature region we also managed to get a time variance analysis in the form of a video we can see the spread of heat as time proceeds this analysis brings out the importance of heat dissipation techniques and how the absence can easily lead to melting of the chip the maximum temperature was obtained somewhere near the center as expected now we proceed to case 2 adding forced convective heat transfer it is well known that any hot body will cool faster in front of a fan this is due to the motion of fluid packets carrying the heat away known as convection efficiency of this process depends on the rate of flow and more importantly the configuration of the flow here we are considering two sub cases 2a consisting of one intake and one exhaust of air and case 2b with two intakes of air flow located on the same side of the cabinet intakes and exhaust just give the direction of flow into and outside the system case 2a has two 6 mm orifices one of which sucks in air at the rate of 0.015 meter cube per second and another which throws out air at the rate of 0.0075 meter cube per second this choice is based on literature review of similar studies we visualize the geometry by looking at the velocity contour a similar analysis involving meshing etc yielded the chip temperature to be about 360 degrees celsius case 2b is similar to the previous one we have two intakes instead of one intake and one exhaust this gives velocity of about 20 meter per second over the chip here the chip temperature comes out to be around 250 degrees celsius clearly 2b is better than 2a now we move on to add heat sinks to the system this is again done in two cases involving two different fin types combined with the best cooling fans configuration it is important to note that the effect of a fin on heat transfer depends on its height and material to draw a fair comparison these are kept the same for both the sub cases case 3a has an area of cylinders as the heat sink its properties are 16 mm height 1 mm radius and there are four rows of 16 cylinders each made from aluminum alloy al6061t6 for this case the chip temperature comes out to be 66 degrees celsius a huge drop due to addition of fins as they, as they increase the area of heat loss and are excellent conductors the final case is case 3b having rectangular fins one can note that the height and material are kept the same This is our best configuration yielding the chip's temperature to be only 48 degrees celsius but to conclude this successfully we need to perform some in hand calculations and match it with the software sensors 
this is the validation and is usually done for a simpler problem the problem we decided to validate is the following we need to find the chip temperature at the steady state for an open system that is there is no cabinet just a chip plus heat sink mounted on a plate the picture on the next slide makes our problem statement clear the chip has same power 75 watts the surface on which it is kept is polycarbonate and flow is maintained over it with a flow speed of around 10 meter per second to keep things simpler we are using a rectangular block of metal as the heat sink this diagram shows the control volume on which we will apply our energy equations and develop appropriate resistance networks the air is in ambient conditions before solving we need to estimate the extents of three modes of heat transfer this is done in two regions we have assumed the following values to estimate and this should be close to the real values for surface and chip temperatures in the bulk of the cupboard the heat sink we cannot have any motion other than random motion also there is no radiation as there are no surfaces in this region we simply calculate the conductive heat transfer coefficient which is obviously far from zero hence only conduction in region 1 for region 2 we have to calculate the total exposed surface area here we need to calculate the heat transfer coefficients for all three as of radiation conduction and convection are possible solving for h in the following manner gives a value of 186.87 watt per meter square kelvin for radiation h is equal to sigma into ts power 4 minus ta power 4 upon ts minus ta where sigma is the stefan boltzmann constant solving gives a radiation transfer coefficient as only 1.71 watt per meter square kelvin conduction calculations are similar to that of region 1 the length scale here is assumed to be of the order of 0.01 meter the small value of k leads to a conductive heat transfer coefficient of 2 watt per meter square kelvin we can safely ignore the effects of radiation and conduction in region 2 as h convection is much much greater than h radiation and h conduction this gives us the idea of the temperature profile it is linear in the bulk only conduction region non linear outside only convection region and assuming the plate to be an insulator the temperature profile is adiabatic like near the base so we draw a simple resistor network with only two resistors note that ts and tc are unknowns and only the flux flux of the current is known reiterating the assumptions we take the base as insulated temperature over the heat sink as uniform we use something called as the jovanovic model uh, we are assuming the flow to be laminar this is indeed the case as we see from reynolds number calculation and neglect radiation etc we assume the validity of the jovanovic model this is a method to convert qid in the cross flow into a flat plate model the procedure is tested statistically as a part of this project solving for the convection part this is the control volume and our goal is to find ts that is the surface temperature in given flow conditions the boundary layer diagrams are also drawn for better understanding as the heat is being lost we have q equal to h bar into a into ts minus t infinity ts is the surface temperature and t infinity is the surrounding temperature we first calculate characteristic length as the square root of area given by the jovanovic model we will use this characteristic length in all further calculations the nusselt number correlation used here is the one given by churchill and ozo the properties of air need to be calculated at the film temperature given by the following formula rearranging equation 7 and combining with equation 1 gives us an implicit form for calculation of ts we employ fixed point iteration as the equation is non linear we start with a guess value and keep iterating for better and better estimates based on our judgment we take the initial guess as 400 kelvin as the heat sink is just a cuboid and the flow rate is almost half that of used in optimized model ts equal to 400 kelvin means tf equal to 350 kelvin calculating properties at this temperature we find reynolds and nusselt number footing in right hand side of equation 8 we get the next value for iteration which is 5.6% different from initial guess we finally converge after the third iteration to a value of 402 kelvin or 129 degrees celsius Once we have the surface temperature and energy balance on this control volume will gives us the chip temperature. We use Fourier's law with K equal to 167 Weber per meter Kelvin for aluminum 6061 alloy and get T chip equal to 131 degrees Celsius. This is close to what we use for estimating heat modes and hence our entire analysis is valid. A near identical problem is solved by running a simulation using ANSI size span to arrive at the chip temperature value of 127 degrees Celsius. So if we compare these results we get a mere deviation of 3.05%. The temperature we got by our on paper analysis is really close to the simulation value. We can therefore claim that all our results have been successfully validated. We can even reason this 3% difference by saying that neglecting radiation in analytical solving brought this effect. 
Therefore, we conclude this project by saying that we managed to bring down the temperature to a mere 48 degrees Celsius in the most optimal case and we used a systematic genetic algorithm approach in doing so. The winning configuration here comprises of two intake fans, both are located on the same side of the cabinet or the casing and usage of rectangular fins for our heat sinks. Also the flow rates at both the intakes is same and is equal to 0.015 meter cube per second and the average velocity of air on the top of GPU chip is around 20 meters per second. With an ever increasing demand for high performance laptops, the computer chips are becoming more and more powerful and at the same time they are becoming smaller and smaller in size. So keeping up with microelectronics industry is a big challenge for us thermal engineers. We need a constant upgrade in our dissipation solutions. This work not only comes up with the best design for GPU cooling but it also highlights the importance of these techniques. We went from more than 350 degrees Celsius as our chip temperature to 40 degrees Celsius in discrete systematic steps. All in all, we got an innate understanding of various modes of heat transfer. This study can further be extended into the domain of material science when we can look at the adhesives which are used at the junctions between these chips and the heat sink and we can study their thermal properties and simulate. Also an annex to this project can be building a more accurate geometry and taking into consideration all other electronics like the CPU, RAM etc. Thank you.